Oh, hello everyone. Yes, it's me, Mr. McInnes, super teacher. And I'm back again with you for another lesson today. I believe it's Thursday, unless I've got my days confused. And today we're going to do a bit more history. So I hope that you've remembered some of the stuff that we talked about last week, because it might come in handy today. And first things first, I wonder if you can tell me who this is. Hopefully you can see this. Can you remember who this lady is and what she was doing? That's right. Her name was Delia. McDermott. And when she was 28 years old in March 1912, she bought a new hat. And last week I told you that, that that 1912 was 108 years ago. And actually I made a bit of a mistake then. Yes, even teachers make mistakes sometimes because my brain was still in 2020 mode. And actually it's 2021 now. And that wasn't 108 years ago. That was 109 years ago, almost. In March, it would be exactly 109 years ago. So 109 years ago is when Delia bought that hat. And we talked about how hats were very important in those days, in the time that Delia was around in 1912, and how it was good etiquette to wear a hat. And people that were very wealthy, people that had a lot of money, could afford nice fancy hats and fancy clothes, and they had very nice lifestyles. But most of the people in Britain in those days were not that wealthy and actually struggled with their everyday life and they couldn't afford such fancy things because Britain was a very unequal society, a very unequal country in those days. Now this photograph of Delia is one of only two images of her that we have, so we're not actually certain exactly what kind of hat she bought. However, it was probably a little bit like one of these hats. Now, this picture comes from an American advertisement, an advert in an American newspaper from the time. And these were the kind of hats that were very popular with women of the poorer classes in Britain in those days. And the most that a woman like Delia could have afforded would have been a small plain hat, maybe one that was made of straw or felt. And then she might have accessorized it, improved it a little bit by adding colorful ribbons or maybe some uh, pretend flowers or maybe some feathers. So these hats were very popular with ladies at the time and it's likely that Delia would have brought, bought a hat that looked like one of these. Now I'm going to give you a little bit more information on Delia today and the first thing is that this is the town or rather the small village where Delia lived. It's called Adagul, make, marked by this red dot on the map. And this country here is Ireland, the Republic of Ireland. In those days, the whole of Ireland, including Northern Ireland, was part of Britain, was part of the United Kingdom. And Nowadays, of course, we've done this in year two, haven't we? We talked about the four parts of the United Kingdom, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, this little bit here. Well, in those days, in 1912, all of Ireland was a part of Britain as well. And Delia's town, Delia's village in Ireland was here at a ghoul. And it was a very small place and Delia lived there in a farmhouse that might have looked a little bit like this one. It's not the exact farmhouse that Delia lived in, but this is a typical farmhouse of the time. And she lived there with her parents, whose name, names were Michael and Bridget. And she also lived with her older sisters, Pat and Mary, and her brother Thomas in a typical farmhouse such as this one. And her family and her worked together to grow potatoes, which was their main source of food. And they also sold some of their potatoes that they grew in order to earn a little money. So this is what Delia and her family would have done in those days. And in fact, most of the people living in that part of Ireland, in the Western part of Ireland, did this as well. It was a, a very, very common thing for people to be potato farmers in Ireland. 
And as you can see from looking at their hats and looking at their clothes, they're not members of the aristocracy, the wealthy people of Britain, that small amount of people that had a lot, a lot, a lot of money. No, they were working people and their lives were quite tough, quite hard. And there's something else that's very interesting about Delia, and I'd like to share it with you now, because in her town of Adagul, her village, I keep calling it a town, it's more of a village really, in her village is a statue, a statue of Delia herself. And maybe this statue shows the kind of hat that Delia bought. It's just possible, isn't it? This is Delia here. And here you can see another angle of the statue and this lady here is looking at them. And this is a statue of Delia in her hometown in Ireland. And it's there today. If you were to go there, you could see this statue. It's still there today. Now, I've got a bit of an interesting question for you. Maybe you can spend some time talking about it with your grown-ups. A few questions here. Hopefully you can see that. I might just move that down in case my video is in the way. It says, why do people have statues made of them? Hmm. What do the statues in the photographs I just showed you, what do they show the people doing? What do you think the people are doing in the statues here? What's Delia and the other people doing? What are they carrying and how are they dressed? What might they be saying or feeling? I'd like you to spend a few minutes talking with your grown up or people around you about those questions and pause the video while you do it. And then when you've had a chat about some of those questions, you can come back and rejoin me. OK, so let's do that now. OK, I hope you had a good chat about those statues. Well, think about this first question. Why do people have statues made of them? We build statues to commemorate events and people commemorate. That means to remember or to celebrate or to honor or show respect for those people for what they might have done and what they might have achieved. So that's very interesting, isn't it? There's a statue of Delia to help remember her or perhaps to celebrate something amazing that she's done and show respect for what it is that she's achieved. Wow. So bearing that in mind, I wonder why they've chosen to have a statue of Delia carrying a briefcase and waving like that. Hmm. I wonder what she might be saying or feeling in that photograph. So if Delia's got a statue of her for, to remember her, to celebrate her, why do you think there is one? What do you think it is that Delia did? What do you think she achieved that made her deserve to have a statue? Mm, very interesting questions, aren't they? Tough one. But you know what? I've got a little job for you now. Once you've had a think about what it is that Delia might have done that meant she deserves to have a statue of her, I'd like you to write down your thoughts. And I'm going to leave this picture here and these words here because you might need them or you might choose to include them in what you're writing about. So there's Delia's name in black. Delia McDermott, Adagool in red, that's the, her village, in the country of Ireland in green, the word statue is here in blue, and I put some other words in like journey, brave, important, voyage, that means like a journey, and heroic. You might choose to use those in your writing, you might not, but when you do your writing I suggest you pause it on this page so that you can see those words to help you with your spelling. So you might choose to write it as a bit of a story. You might choose to write Delia's story, whatever it is she did that meant she had a statue made of her. You might choose to do it in a slightly different way. It's up to you. You might choose to say, I think that Delia did this and this. Or you might choose to do it like one night, Delia, and tell it as a bit of a story. I don't mind how you do it, but I'm really looking forward to seeing your thoughts and your writing about why, what you think Delia did, what adventure she had, what amazing achievement she made that meant she got a statue of her. Use your imagination, whatever comes to your mind from looking at that picture, that statue, have a think about what she might be doing 
maybe where she might be going, what sort of adventure she might be going on and what she achieves. And then write your thoughts down, maybe as a story about Delia's adventure or maybe in a different way. And then when you finish that, you can share that with me and you can um, post it on Class Dojo or you can send it as an email. I'm looking forward to seeing those. I'm sure you've got some brilliant ideas that you can share with me. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen at a moment, but if you want to see those words on the screen, you can go back, don't forget, and pause it there so you can see all the words to help you with your writing. I hope that you enjoy that activity today, and I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit more about Delia's life. We're going to learn more later on, maybe next week. But for now, I'm going to say goodbye and see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.